okay, just like Elijah was called up, okay? That, but that does not in any way, shape, form, or fashion say that that is the pre-tribulation rapture. That is a tradition of man that is not thus saith God. Again, I say he was talking to John. He was not talking to the ecclesia, the body, which today they call the church. But remember this. See, this is how far we've gotten and, and how amazingly backwards we are as a society that, that, that look... We drive on the parkway and park in the driveway. This, and that's just a, that's just a secular illustration of, of, of spiritual death in, in, the, in the body of Christ. Now, having said that, not all. Let me, reframe, let, me, let me refresh one more time this thing. Not all, but predominantly the pre-tribulation rapture-believing people do not believe in taking a stand and speaking out against an evil government. They do not believe that you should do anything, anything, when it comes to protecting your family, they believe that you should stick your hands out and be that great martyr that Jesus called you to be. Well, I agree with being a, a martyr for Jesus Christ, but number one, I don't believe in casting my pearls before the swine, okay? And swine, Jesus referred to the swine, and, and I refer to the swine today as an evil, corrupt government that wants to kill babies, promote homosexuality, tax you to death, charge you usury, lie to you every time they open their mouth, and I will not be a part of it. I will not, I will not be a supporter of that. And I will not give my children up. I homeschool my kids. I will continue to homeschool my kids. Now, if you can't, then that's your prerogative. But me and my wife gave up a bunch of stuff in order to do it. And I'm going to stick with it. They will be trained up in this book, which is last, has la heaven and earth uh, uh, pass away, but this world will last forever. We will train them up in that. Now, I got off on that rabbit trail. Let me try to get back to the main focus of this about a pre-tribulation rapture. Now, in Matthew 24 and verse 30, uh, in verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, uh, it says the sun will be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. The stars will fall from heaven. The powers of heaven will be shaken. Verse 30, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in power and in the clouds with great glory. He will send his angels. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. With the great sound of the trumpet and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Okay, let's go over here to 1 Corinthians if I can find it in this Bible I'm trying to use here. If I could find it here, the pages are some kind of thin. Some kind of thin. 1 Corinthians, I should have had it marked, but I didn't. Y'all bear with me. Romans, Corinthians, da 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 Okay, let's see what Paul said, because uh, in, in, he wrote 13 books, 13 epistles. Let's see what he said in 15, 51 through 53. Let's just see what he said, and I'm just going to lay it out there. You, you have to decide on your own what you believe, okay? Like I said, I don't know all the Bible. I'm a student of prophecy, and I'm a child of the Most High God that strives and studies to, to show myself approved unto God that still makes mistakes, just like we all do. But I got to tell you, I got to tell you, there is no way, there is no way that, that I would ever believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. Okay, it ain't gonna happen. It, it, it ain't gonna happen. But that is, that is a that is a false sense of security that that somehow or another you are, or this group of people are better than John. The Baptist who had his head cut off because a little old whore was dancing in front of the, the king, King Herod, and, and he just chose the whore over the prophet of God and killed the prophet. Okay? Or maybe James that had his head cut off. Or maybe Peter that was crucified upside down because he, he said, I don't want to be crucified right side up. I'm not worthy like my Savior. See, the mentality of the people today is different, and that's just a few examples, are different than the mentality of the true apostles and the prophets because they knew who they served. They were on fire for God. The Elijah, he called down fire from, from heaven and destroyed the prophets of Baal, you know, on Mount Carmel. And, and the list goes on and on and on. And then Jezebel went at him, and he, and, he, and he wanted to, he said, God, take me out of here. I'm scared to death of her. Well, look, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. Perfect love casts out all fear. And if you know the love of Jesus Christ, he'll give you the, he'll give you the truth, the ability, and the chutzpah to stand up and, and the backbone to stand up and say, you know what, I am not going to back down from this evil. I'm going to prepare myself spiritually and physically. And you know what, I'm going to take a stand for Jesus. Hey, going to church every Sunday, sitting on a pew, and then going back to your same old routine every day of the week is not serving Jesus Christ, okay? Now, that is the mentality, and that is the structure of today's entertainment. That is no different than going to a Hollywood movie, enjoying the movie, or going to a football game, enjoying the football game. After the football game is over, you go back to your old ways. That is not any way, shape, form, or fashion serving God, but it is predominantly... The, the attributes of the modern-day entertainment establishment church, but it ain't of God. Now, you hear me? It ain't of God. Let's see what Paul said about this trumpet deal that Jesus talked about in Matthew 24. 
Okay, now, having said that, watch this. Uh, in 15, 51 through 53, I want to read this real quick to you. And like I said, I won't cover all this because my time's limited, but I do want to get this out there, make an understanding, and let everybody know that, you know what, hey, if you, Jesus said study to show yourself approved unto God, he said to study to show yourself, he says work out your own salvation with trembling and fear. Don't take my word for what I'm saying. Don't take nobody else's word, but look at the scriptures, and if you believe the word of God, you have to take line upon line, precept upon precept. You can't jerk one verse here out of context and say this is it and that's it. You have to, you have to look at the broad spectrum of what God's word says. But let's get to it. 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed, transformed from corruptible bodies to incorruptible. Hold on. Hold on. Mm -hmm. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, the last trumpet. Okay. Now, either Paul and Jesus are a liar, or they're agreeing here. Or either this pre-tribulation rapture is somehow or another something that was a tradition that was started not based on the Word of God, okay, but based on somebody's thinking. Misinterpretation of Scripture, might I say. He says the last trump, the last trump, not the first, the last trump. Okay, I don't have time to go into it, and I may do a study on this and may put a video up on it on the on the on the trumpets, the seals, and the trumpets of Revelation, and see what happened for it. There is a, a so-called rapture. Okay, now having said that, let's move on. Let me finish this up. For the trumpet shall sound, the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible. We shall be changed. For this corruptible, mm, 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 mm shall put on incorruption, this mortal will put on Im immortality. Okay? Look, I'm not covered at all. Let me get over here to my other notes here just for a minute, okay? I'm going to try to go through these arguments and, and uh, because I had to print some of this stuff out because finding all them uh, scriptures and marking it up, I'd have had that thing marked up. But in any event, let me get to this point real quick and I'm going to close this out. Take a few more minutes of your time and I know that, that people have argued about making such long videos, but you know what? We're dealing with the Word of God here. We're dealing with salvation of souls. We're dealing with being prepared, being ready, being instant in season and out of season. So I hope you can find the time to watch these videos and hope you can get learn something from them. Okay? Let's go with the arguments of a, of a pre-tribulation rapture. Okay? Watch this. Argument number one. God is a loving God, and he would never allow his children to suffer through the great tribulation. Hence, they will be leaving through the rapture before any trouble occurs. Okay. All right. Now. Answer, God has always been and always will be a loving God. In fact, in 1 John 4, 8, and, uh, 4, 16, but we must not misuse the attributes of or misunderstand that he also is an infinite, eternal God whose ways and thoughts are not like ours. Okay, let's move on. Right here, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways near ways. For declares the Lord, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Also, remember this that God has allowed his most devoted servants to suffer incredible, incredible pain and death in this life. Even up to the point, just like I told you a while ago, John the Baptist, Stephen, James, Annabas, moreover, many of the prophets of God were killed, remembering the days of Jezebel, but most noteworthy is how the Father in heaven allowed his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer what he suffered. Have you ever thought about that? Let's move on. I don't want to bore y'all. I don't want to bore y'all. I do not want to bore you. I just want to put a few things out there, and let's just move on with it. Argument number two. Jesus promised the church the following. Since you've kept my command and dear patiently, I was also keeping from the hour of trial is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth, Revelation 3.10. Okay? Jesus said he'd keep Christians from this hour of trial coming on the earth, hence Christians will be delivered from the tribulation period. Answer to that argument is coming up right now. Now, the Greek word found in Revelation 3.10 translated keep you from this also is found in John 17.11, 17.15, and, it, and, it, and, and watch this in the Greek. Keep through. Keep you through. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm just, I'm just telling you, okay? You decide for yourself, okay? This is what will happen if we are the generation of saints that to face the Christos, the Antichrist, 
uh, that I did a video on the other day, and I just said, I'll just put some attributes out there. You can agree or disagree, okay? That's what this is all about on these uh, on these end-time studies is, the end-time studies is, you yeah, lay it out there, you agree or disagree. You work out your own salvation with trembling and fear. I just present evidence that I gather, and you you either agree or disagree, and, and you know, we choose to agree to disagree, but, it, that, you know, it doesn't make us want to fight and war against one another. We just simply present the truth, and the truth will stand on its own. Okay. Now, it says, and, uh, this is what will happen if we are the generation of saints fighting the Antichrist. We will be kept through that horrible time. That is, as long as we do our part for God to continue to keep us as the Scriptures declare. Mm -hmm. Also,